Chapter 15, The Rescue. The helicopter flew through the New York streets. There ain't motion to Nathan and Tricia to get ready. The three of them slipped out the side door and onto the landing skids. They were attached to the helicopter with 50-foot ropes that dangled off the bottom. The three of them slid down the ropes. Now Thorain, Nathan, and Tricia dangled at the end of the ropes as Jenny expertly flew toward the building. Thorain shuddered a bit as it came into view. He set his focus back on the job at hand, not the past. Jenny flew up at the proper height. Whenever you're ready, Jenny said to the three. Nathan and Tricia nodded at Thorain. He took a deep breath and said, Go, into his headset. Jenny wheeled the chopper back a bit and flung it forward. Thorain, Nathan, and Tricia first swung back and then they started to swing forward. They gained speed and at just the right moment they hit the quick release. They flew through the air and crashed through the windows of the building. Jenny turned the helicopter and headed for the airport. Tricia looked to the other two. They were both getting up. Nathan was picking a rather large piece of glass out of his arm. You okay? she asked. Yep, he said and dropped the bloodied glass to the floor. The rain stood in one smooth motion. Let's go, he said, and they ran out into the hall. Thorain stopped for a moment and closed his eyes. Then they snapped open and he started running. The alarms were blaring and the guards were running around in confusion. Thorain led them down the hall. He closed his eyes again. He could hear Taylor's heart, a talent he had picked up from the years of watching over the two boys. He continued down the hall. Renard woke up and slipped out of his bed. The alarms were blaring and his aide rushed into his room. Sir! But the aide was not able to get the rest out. They are here, Renard said and pushed his aide aside. He rushed out of the room and onto the elevator. They worked their way through the halls, Thorain leading them and Tricia in the middle and Nathan bringing up the rear. They walked past an elevator and, and just as they passed, the doors opened and there stood Renard. Nathan ran towards him, but Renard had him pegged. Nathan screamed as Renard slammed him into a wall. Nathan looked at Tricia with desperation. Go! He screamed and turned his attention back to Renard. Thorain and Tricia ran down the hall. Thorain slammed through the door and Tricia was overwhelmed. There sat Taylor, bound in a high-backed wooden chair. Taylor looked up and tears flooded his eyes. It's good to see you. Taylor squeaked. His body was still weak, working on rebuilding all the blood he had lost. Thorain untied him, and he and Tricia hauled him up on their shoulders and headed for the door. Nathan fought with all his effort, but soon Renard had the upper hand. Nathan was thrown into a wall, and his back screamed with pain as he crashed through it. He looked down the hall and saw Tricia, Thorain, and Taylor emerge from the room. But Renard was now loose of Nathan and started toward them. Nathan pulled himself out of the wall and started after Renard, but he made one fatal mistake as he approached. He screamed, No! Nathan's hands were raised as he neared Renard. However, it was too late. Renard spun on his heel and his hand shot out. Nathan looked down. Renard was holding his heart. He looked up at Tricia and Thorain's horrified faces. Go! He yelled again. And then his lifeless body fell to the floor. Renard tossed Nathan's heart to the side and started at a full run towards the others. Tricia, Taylor, and Thorain started running. The hall ended in a window, and just as Renard was reached out to grab Taylor, the three vampires burst from the windows into the night air. As they fell hundreds of feet toward the ground, Thorain adjusted himself and held Taylor tight. Two black base jump parachutes popped and they floated to the ground. Taylor looked up as they were floating to the ground. Hey, nice touch, he said as they hit the ground. They ran a few blocks and soon they were in a car headed for the airport. Where did you learn how to hotwire a car? Taylor asked, a bit aloof as still being a bit off canter. Some things even you don't need to know, Tricia said. The runaway slipped away as the rain flew up to altitude. Renard sat in his bedroom. Although most of the walls were glass, they were specially tinted. It was dark, and the city sparkled in front of him. Anger worked itself over and over in his system. It is of no matter, he snarled out to the lights. However, in the end, meeting his nephew had not done good things for Renard's confidence. Thorain got the plane in the air, and they were on their way back to Salt Lake. Thorain went back into the cabin. Taylor was upset. 
The rescue had been successful, but the price was too much for Taylor to bear. Trisha tried to comfort him, but not to much avail. You should have left me there, Taylor said. I was the one that ran away, Taylor said as Thorain entered in the cabin. No, I know you, Taylor. I know what you were doing. You did it when your parents died, too. You would have come around. That I know, and you don't have to. As for Nathan, it was a great loss, to be sure. But you dishonor his sacrifice by saying you were not worth it, Thorain said with a bit of authority in his voice. He's right. Nathan knew you would help the war. He did it for you, yes, but more for the larger good of giving us a chance to win this war, Trisha said and gave him a hug. Taylor realized they were right. Nathan had done what he committed to do, and now it was time for Taylor to come through the same way. They spoke of all the events that had happened while Taylor had been away. Taylor caught up quickly, but it was hard to believe some of the turns in the story. The salt flats? Taylor asked with a tilted eyebrow. Yes, it seems Renard has a flair for the... Flair, Thorant explained. Taylor looked out the window. Thanks, everyone, he said. Thorant laid his hand on Taylor's shoulder. I am sorry it took us so long, Thorant said. Trisha kissed him on the cheek. You're a pain in my ass, you know it, Trisha said with a smile. Taylor smiled at her, and then up at Thorant. Mine too, he smiled. The flight seemed to take forever, but finally the plane touched down in Salt Lake. <laughs>